So you can see that if we use this trunk interface, then the packets from other VLANs will keep the same to be forward to the other VLANs. And the packets uh, which is untagged coming in, then they should be added with its own tag and then be decapsulated here to become untagged packet here. So uh, through this trunk, the untagged packet are still untagged packet and the tagged packet are still tagged packet. Okay, so uh, by using the access interface and this trunk interface together, we can allow such VLAN configuration. So by configure these four to be access interface and these two to be trunk interface, we can allow PC1's packet originally no tags and then add a 10 tag 10. And then here, switch can use this tag 10 to see, okay, so if this packet come to this interface, it is allowed to go out. But if it arrive here, then it is not allowed to go out. Similarly for 20, they are allowed to go from this interface, but they are not allowed from here. So we actually can achieve the VID separation, right? So this and this to come, come one VLAN, and this one and this one becomes another VLAN. So this is the application of access and trunk interface. Okay, so you need to know that these are access interface, these are trunk interface, and you need to be very clear about how uh, the, they process the packets. Okay, now let's look at what is the hybrid interface. Actually, the hybrid interface is combination of these two kind of interface, the access interface and the trunk interface. The key difference is that for hybrid interface, they have two permission lists. One is the tagged permission list. Another is the untagged permission list. And the main difference between the hybrid and the trunk is that for trunk interface, you see here, yeah, for trunk interface, there are only one untagged packet allowed to come out. That is, if the tag equals to its own PVID, then they can be untagged here, right? But for hybrid interface, actually they allow multiple packet, multiple tags to become the untagged packet to transmit out. Okay, so here is an example. The frame receiving process of the hybrid interface are exactly the same with the trunk interface. So if it's an untagged, then put in the tag. If it is tagged, then check whether it's permitted. So it's just the same with the trunk. But for this frame sending, they are a little bit different. If there is packet coming in, they should check it within its tagged permission list and both untagged permission list. If this one exists in the untagged permission list, it means this packet should be changed into an untagged frame to send out. So they should remove the tag and then send the untagged frame out. And if this packet mm -hmm. is within the tagged permission list, then they should not remove the tag. They should just simply forward out with the tag left in. That's the only difference. So actually you can see here if it's trunk interface, only if this number equals to the default PVID and this number is in the permission list, it can be re-untagged. But here, it doesn't care whether this equals to its own PVID. Only if it is listed in the permission untagged list, then this can be forwarded with untagged frame. That's the only difference between the hybrid and the trunk. So why does the hybrid interface should work like this? Actually, we can use this example to illustrate. So assume that we have two switches connected with each other. We have two v PCs belong to two different VLANs and we have one server belong to another VLAN. 
And here we configure all these interfaces to be the hybrid interfaces. Okay. And the, um, in each, for each interface, they actually will list two, um, permission list. One is this untagged permission list. Another one is the tagged permission list. Here, for example, the port one have no detagged permission list actually is zero. And here for the port three, the untagged permission list is zero. Okay. But they, they will have different, they have two different types of permission list. And then how does the switch do the, for, uh, do, do the forwarding? Actually, it will be like this. So, uh, look at, first we look at the packet from VLAN 10. This is untagged because it is sent by PC. And then in the switch, they will check, uh, whether this ID equals to is in the permission list. So here you can see that in port one, 10 is in the permission list. Then they can simply forward the packet. Uh, they will add the PVID here. So the PVID is 10 and then send the packet out. Okay. So this packet becomes a tagged packet. And then the tagged packet, when it arrives port three, they will check here in port three that this 10 is in the tagged list. So they are permissioned to send out and you don't need to de and, uh, decapsulate the tag. So they will keep the tag in and transmit out. Then in switch two in port three here, switch two port three, they check for 10. Yeah, they are still in the tagged permission list. So they are permissioned to be transmit. And then they go into the port one. In the port one, in port one, they, they, they see that, okay, first it is permissioned. Secondly, they are in the untagged permission list. So the 10 can be allowed to transmit out, but they should be, uh, be removed by the tag. So here is the packet. Okay. So they becomes untagged packet to the VLAN, uh, to the server. So this is the example for a package from PC, uh, PC one. And similarly for, for the packet from the server, actually uh, they will be added by 100 in the port one here. And then they will send out. And then because 100 is in the port threes, tagged list so they can be transmitted out and still they are here so they are be transmitted in and then they are here so but because they are untagged so when the packet 100 go out actually that is untagged and that is a uh, untagged packet received by packet one and packet two so this is a example for the hybrid interface. So you can see that actually, if this is a hybrid um, interface, both the tagged packet and untagged packet can be transmitted out. Okay. And which one is transmitted out? They can check it according to the list, permission list. Okay. So that's all for the uh, interface type. Actually, this is very important because when you configure the switch, you need to know which kind of type of interface is suitable for the detailed scenario. Okay. So this is a summary. So for access interface, when they receive a frame, if they don't have the tag, then they will simply add the PVID. If they have already tagged, then they will check whether it's the same with the PVID. If it's same, permit to transmit. If not, discard. Then for frame sending, if the access interface receive a frame and want to send out, then the only thing they need to do is to check whether the tag equals to the PVID. If it's equal, then remove the tag and send out. This is for the correct VLAN. And otherwise, they will discard the frame. That's all. And for trunk interface, if they receive untagged frame, they should add the VLAN VID into it and check whether it's permissioned. If yes, 
allow it to transmit. If not, discard it. And if it's tagged, then check whether they are in the list of permission ID. If yes, send it. If not, discard it. And if they receive a frame, want to transmit out, then first they will check whether the VID is in the permission list. If it's in the permission list, then allow to transmit. And if it's equal to the PVID, then they should remove the tag and send out. If it's different from the PVID, then just send out. And if it's not in the list, then discard the frame. Finally, it's for hybrid. For hybrid, when they receive a frame that is the same as the trunk, but the only difference is that when they send a frame, they should match the VID with the permission list. If they are in the untagged permission list, then they should remove the tag and send out. If they are in the tagged permission list, then they should forward the packet without removing the tag. That's all the process of the different type of interfaces.